2017 is uh, an initiative that was signed in July of 2017. Uh, it was a companion bill to the bill that extended the cap and trade. Uh, it was uh, authored by uh, Eduardo Garcia and Cristina Garcia. And the main goal of this uh, uh, initiative, of this bill, is to really understand what are the localized air quality problems in certain areas of California that are more disadvantaged. Uh, so I, I, what I like about this bill is that it recognizes that despite the progress that has been made across the state in terms of improving air quality, there are some communities that have, have been left behind. And that it is really uh, not only recognizing that, but actually doing something about it. So it's giving those communities the opportunity to understand what is polluting their air and what can they do about it? How can they solve these problems? So um, it is an opportunity for really making changes in these communities. Uh, well, I work with the Central California Environmental Justice Network. Uh, we work in uh, disadvantaged communities in Fresno, Kern, and Tulare counties. And even before 8617, we have been uh, doing community air monitoring because we really wanted to help uh, communities, especially those fence line communities that are like really close to wells or really close to the fields that are sprayed with pesticides or really close to very important sources of pollution to understand what were they breathing. Uh, so our monitoring efforts were very rudimentary. We were using local sensors. Uh, and you know, so when this AB617 bill came about, we were like, extremely happy because that was the potential of you know expanding these efforts to other communities and most importantly doing it with more um, technology with more uh, expertise we were able to contract it uh, to contract with California tracking team who has uh, an epidemiologist on board who has a lot of public health experts that are really going to provide more um, robust uh, you know science data uh, backing to our efforts so really excited that our community members are going to be able to extend and expand and increase their efforts in this area well there are different ways in which people can be involved one way is for those residents who are living in the communities that were selected for the implementation of year one uh, in the San Joaquin Valley those two communities were Chapter and South Central Fresno so people who live within these boundaries should take advantage and be part of the steering committee which is the local body that is going to really determine where these monitors will be placed and most importantly the emission reduction programs that will be crafted to address these problems for those that live outside of these boundaries there are other ways to participate by um, engaging in other uh, community monitoring efforts that are happening as part of uh, community-based organizations that receive grants from CAR to develop community monitoring networks separate from what the regulatory agency will be doing. And these efforts are going to be happening in various communities across the San Joaquin Valley and across the state. So uh, people can be uh, connecting with environmental justice organizations to understand and know which of those communities will be uh, chosen to deploy these monitors. They, even if they don't live in those communities, they could be aware of how to access the information. That data is going to be uh, accessible online. So any, any resident, no matter where they live, can see this data and use it to inform their decisions about being outdoors or not. And lastly, they should be uh, looking into what these communities that were selected are doing so that they could start preparing themselves for, for, for the future years. Uh, this process is not going to be a one-year process. In the subsequent years, CARB will be selecting other additional communities to continue these efforts. So it, uh, it is my understanding that early next year, CARB will be already conducting community meetings across the state uh, and of course in the San Joaquin Valley to let people know about how to nominate their communities for year two and how to apply for grants as well. said uh, the difference between the AB 617 and other bills that I have seen in the past is that it doesn't uh, stay only at the assessment level. It really moves into the uh, action, into changes. 
And I think that because of that, one of the many differences that I would like to see and I think we will see uh, with AB617 are some specific uh, changes that will benefit these communities. For example, through the implementation of best available technology in industries that are near these communities, uh, that more, more trucks are you know, going by these communities, have cleaner technology, are more like uh, cleaner, efficient. Uh, the other thing is that if there are uh, specific sensible locations like schools, hospitals or neighborhoods that are really affected by pollution, they could be uh, perhaps you know, benefit by receiving funding for, for filters in their homes or schools, uh, so I think that there are going to be tangible changes that the residents of these communities are going to be seeing.